Hello and welcome back to the NHL um, Best Bets. Yesterday there were a handful of games. Um, we had a few picks um, and uh, for whatever reason we managed to pick those games that uh, are some kind of uh, coin flips at the end. Uh, first of all, um, Boston visited Washington. Home team was leading 3-0. Um, but the um, end result was 6-3. Uh, and um, then Calgary Winnipeg was a very tight game, 3-3 um, overtime. And then shootout finally decided that um, Calgary was the winner in the uh, shootout by 4-3. So um, not very great uh, performance for those picks. Um, Tommy, what's your take out of these uh, few games? Uh, very ty typical games uh, for our picks, I think. Uh, <clears throat> both of these, these games could have gone either way. Of course, Washington leading 3-0, then falling 3-5 at home uh, against Boston. It's, uh, it's a bad result for the Capitals team. They have to, they have to feel that after. Um, of course, now returning the, the superstars and the game has only declined. So uh, something to look into there. The, the, t the players that came into the, came into the team when these big players were out, performed a lot better, uh, showed a lot of character and, and fought their way into a couple of victories. And now uh, when things are back to normal, it looks uh, a bit lazy. It looks a bit uh, um, maybe uh, uninterested in certain ways. They definitely let off the off the gas uh, after going 3 nothing up. And of course, the team of Boston's caliber will, will definitely punish you if you do that. So it was a good win for Boston. Boston was a better team in the end, so no question about that. Uh, but with those odds, again, it's there there. If, uh, if it was actually a smart bet still, uh, Capital should have uh, performed better after taking the early lead. But uh, this is sometimes what happens. And then, of course, in Winnipeg, the similar thing, the coin flip uh, after the penalty shootout. Um, now without Patrick Lainet, they might feel that a bit. He was uh, quite okay in penalties as well. Um, but yeah, uh, very very much a game uh, exactly as we thought it would be quite even battle. Uh, both teams quite good uh, offensively, a little bit uh, struggling defensively. 3-3 three, three after the regular time and then um, Calgary took the spoils in the, um, in the shootout. So... Again, these coin flips that I would definitely take if the positive value was for the home team here. So no question about that. And, and Winnipeg could have easily taken this as well. Yeah, I think um, like you mentioned um, yesterday, it's uh, good to check the odds uh, for those um, no overtime bets that uh, it's a void after regular, se uh, regular time is um, tied. And there were a few other games um, also. We had some um, value in simulations. So New York Rangers um, finally won. I think it was uh, quite a bit uh, for the performance of the goalie. There, not uh, so much of the offensive power that uh, they have been looking for. And then also uh, Tampa took a um, predicted victory against um, Nashville. Um, what was the... Overall number in our uh, simulations uh, still positive, I assume. Yeah, overall we are still positive, almost 1,500 in all categories. Uh, last night a little bit minus, but uh, only uh, about 70 or 80 uh, in all categories. So uh, it was a uh, not a good night, but uh, with this amount of games, it's uh, bound to happen that it's about 50-50. But of course, the uh, the odds makers usually win in these cases. So if it's a very close one, so um, we did we did get it wrong with uh, Washington and uh, Montreal and then the Winnipeg Calgary game. So three out of five was incorrect in ours. So uh, that makes it a little bit of a minus. Um, I have to say about New York Rangers, they played a lot more solid game than before uh, ever in this season. Of course, Pittsburgh was a little bit um, out of their uh, their pace for sure, but uh, maybe getting rid of uh, Tony D'Angelo now a little bit more uh, peaceful in the dressing room probably for the for the team, and they they showed some sort of a uh, um, solidarity there on the ice that they managed to pull out an effort that uh, that managed to beat the Penguins who hadn't lost a lot this season so it's a good good start for the Rangers still a long ways to go but um, there is something there and the team is really talented so have to keep an eye out on that 
Um, on the other other games, not big surprises. Of course, Montreal now uh, still uh, scoring goals at will, a um, lot more than they are supposed to. Uh, Vancouver struggling uh, as expected. So uh, that's something that we need to take a look in the simulations. Now about 10 games has been played. So Montreal should probably be a little bit better than we have anticipated. But otherwise, pretty uh, pretty solid um, performance from the simulations in, in every uh, every aspect yep and um, out of those five games um, I think uh, four went over so that is something that uh, we've now taken closer look and when we check our picks for tonight uh, you can see here that uh, we have um, two total of bets uh, both over five and a half goals. Um, first one, Buffalo visits uh, New York Islanders. Um, Buffalo have been able to score and um, their defense is uh, maybe not the best one. Islanders uh, traditionally been a very defensive team, but they have struggled a bit. So our pick here is plus money for the over five and a half goals. And then Colorado, Minnesota. Colorado, as we known, maybe the most uh, uh, offensive team and, and uh, best performing offense in the league. And Minnesota is um, also capable of scoring Colorado down to their third goalie, Mr. Mishka. And um, there, even though it's a bit um, minus money, minus 115, over five and a half uh, is very valuable bet. Yeah, I think this is the moment that we've been waiting for. Now the uh, the odds makers have reacted to the uh, to the amount of goals that there is not so many goals uh, being scored at the moment than there was early on the season where there was six and seven goals constantly. Now the goal totals have gone down a little bit, so we can actually find the value here in the over 5.5 goals, which is a, which is a good thing for us. Um, I think in both of these games, it's very likely that both teams are able to score three goals. Uh, Minnesota, especially because of Colorado, uh, very likely playing uh, Hunter Mishka uh, in the goal, uh, not very established keeper by any means, and Colorado has had their uh, problems defensively, and of course that offense is still uh, capable of producing a lot. Uh, also, Minnesota's goaltender situation a little bit in question. Kapo Kähkönen has been uh, playing for a while. Cam Talbo is probably back uh, between the pipes, but doesn't really uh, really change anything. They are still la leaking goals. Both teams have scored closer to six goals per game. So this is a, a good bet and uh, should be a good game as well. Probably quite high scoring uh, because Minnesota has also probably realized that they can't win games by only uh, by playing defense as they might have uh, tried in the beginning. But uh, they have a couple of uh, offensive weapons as well to, to put in use. Um, similar way, New York Islanders, of course, Barry Trotz is the defensive mastermind, but they've had a lot of a lot of issues in defense. Um, the team has looked very um, loose in a way that the, the the offense, the forwards are not defending as well as they should. They're not helping the defense, and then the defense is left alone with the puck. They're, they're doing a, um, a lot of turnovers, which is very, very uh, unlikely uh, for the New York Islanders team. So. When they do that, they are lack, uh, leaking goals as well. Uh, also, both goaltenders, Carter Hutton for Buffalo Sabres, uh, probably uh, Sorokin for Islanders, have not performed in their top level. So this is a, a great bet as well to go over over in this, uh, in this game. Uh, Taylor Hall, Jack Eichel for Buffalo um, need to start scoring for them to win games. Yep, uh, there is... Um... Uh, All together nine games. Um, this uh, Pittsburgh New Jersey game is postponed, um, but um, out of nine games, there are also some values um, that simulations are suggesting, and um, it's a bit uh, two-way category here. There are these um, big home favorites like um, Edmonton and um, St. Louis, and um, then other way around. Um, uh, road underdogs uh, like um, Dallas, uh, Vancouver, and um, Minnesota. 
that uh, somehow generate uh, interest in, in simulations uh, game after game. Um, do you think these, um, some of these would be good bets or should we stick with um, some of our, let's say, simulation favorite teams like uh, Winnipeg and uh, Chicago when they are playing at home as underdog? It seems that if we are not picking those games, they are going correct. So maybe maybe someone else can pick those. So no, but I understand how these simulation things because a lot of these games are very close and the odds are then uh, very very lopsided. So um, it's interesting to see Minnesota, for example, uh, forty five percent probability compared to the odds that are around thirty eight. So big value there for quite a quite a big underdog as well um, on the road. Um, but I would take uh, take one look at the Columbus Dallas game. Uh, Dallas Stars traveling to Columbus. They ha- they are underdogs quite heavily in their plus something uh, odds, and in simulations they have more than fifty percent. So they are money line favorites as well. So uh, Dallas, of course, a bit disappointing maybe against Carolina. But you have to remember Columbus. Um, they have um, they they've gotten good results despite playing quite badly. Um, all the advanced statistics show that Columbus shouldn't be doing that well. Um, they've been relying heavily on their goaltending and also the uh, couple of players scoring goals, but they have allowed massive amount of uh, first grade chances and probably gonna uh, leak some goals against this uh, very talented Dallas offense. How about then... Um, um... Chicago playing against Carolina. If uh, Kevin Lankin is still um, between the pipes, uh, will he guarantee win, or um, is it just um, maybe total bet um, under like like it has been uh, in the last uh, few times when he has been playing? Yeah, Kevin Lankin of course um, offers his team a chance to win every night. At least it looks so early on in the season. Uh, Carolina has been pretty good. Uh, of course, they lost their first goalkeeper, Peter Mrazek, early uh, last game. Uh, James Reimer did fine coming in, so uh, should be okay for for a time being. Um, hard to say. I would I would prefer the under here. I'm not that trustful of uh, Chicago's uh, ability to produce goals. Of course, a good good performance from uh, Pius Suter, for example, coming in as number one center man. Um, Patrick Kane always scoring goals, so um, it's not that bad a team, but uh, considering Carolina's great um, performances as of late, I think uh, the under would be a good go, if you trust your boy Kevin Lankinen in this case. And then um, our pick last night, um, Winnipeg um, Calgary, Uh, as we saw it was uh, 50-50, now they are playing back to back and um, um, when we check the historical uh, track record from the last uh, three years, uh, back-to-back home games for Winnipeg, um, their overall home win percentage is 61, back-to-back home game 62.5, so not a big difference there. Same uh, applies for Galgary, their away win percentage is uh, 53% and exactly the same is back-to-back home. So. Um, in light of historical numbers, um, there's no big difference if these teams are having rest days or playing back to back. But um, I think Winnipeg uh, maybe can think a uh, little bit, at least the uh, goalie Hellenbach, uh, how far the shoots are coming or shots are coming from, because the first goal was um, maybe the longest um, shot in uh, this season that he sucked in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it had to come at some point. He's been playing a lot. Uh, that's also a very interesting um, talking point that now back-to-back games, both teams have clear number ones, Jakob Markstrom for Calgary, uh, Connor Ellebock for Winnipeg. They've been playing a lot, both. Uh, now it's back-to-back. Which team has the goal to go to the number two goalkeeper or will they continue uh, with these number ones and take a risk of them um, being a bit out of it after after a night's game, a long one, uh, all the way through the shootout. So this is a like a game um, inside a game, 
uh, that which team will have the the uh, the bravery to put in either David Riddich for uh, Calgary or uh, Laurent Brossois for Winnipeg. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, at the moment, neither team has uh, publicly announced their starters, so it could be that they go with their number one keepers as well. Yep, and I think the last game that uh, we can review here, Ottawa goes to Edmonton. Edmonton big guns have finally started to shoot as uh, predicted and I uh, think that could be another over in between those teams uh, because uh, when um, Leon Dreisaitl uh, scores um, six assists uh, it's usually over game. Yeah, both these guys, Conor McDavid and uh, Leon Dreisaitl, over 20 points already in this season, so of course it helps when you score six in one game. Um, Ottawa will probably uh, improve a little bit. It was a quite catastrophic um, performance, especially shorthanded uh, for them last time around. But still, um, I do agree that it's going to be an over. Uh, those guys uh, of Edmonton are on fire and will run havoc the uh, the Ottawa de- defense that is not very, very strong by any means. Uh, of course, in simulations, the, we, we love the goal scoring uh, teams. So uh, Edmonton are really heavy favorite. 75% um, of the simulations are going for the Oilers. So um, over and Oilers is a is a bet. Not a lot of value there because the odds are really really uh, low. But um, a good go there if you if you like Edmonton. Let's see how the game game goes and um, how our over picks uh, are doing uh, tonight. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow. Yeah, let's hope for goals finally.